Welcome to Earth, A Love Story. I'm your host, Robin Lassiter. This time on the podcast, I speak with human design expert, Adrian Meddy. I met Adrian on my recent trip to Contact in the Desert, and there was this instant familiarity. It was really cool. Um, I was so excited when I found out that she was into human design. And then as we uh, got to know each other better, I realized like, oh, wow, she's into human design. <laughs> she's, she knows all the things. And I am so fascinated by the system and I've been deep diving in it um, for a few years now. But it's huge and complicated and it's very intimidating. I didn't know how to get into it deeper, so I just kind of kept Googling things and I had this sort of reluctant resignation that I would have to figure out how to study it and learn it someday because um, there's so much in there that, that I want to engage with. And then, no, I met Adrian, and uh, now I don't have to spend years and years learning all the things. And an interesting note for my fellow experiencers, uh, human design was received as a download from what Ra Uruhu called the voice. And his recounting of this is one of the trippier experiencer stories that I've heard. Um, I've linked a video of him talking about it in the show notes, so you can check that out. I recommend it. It's weird and good. So I love that aspect of it as well. And I didn't know that when I first found human design, uh, what I knew first is that it changed my life. Just discovering that I am a projector with an emotional authority changed everything in my life. It kind of made things make sense in a way that I hadn't been able to before. And I really quit swimming upstream quite as much. Uh, And then I learned more about my profile, that I'm a 2-5, which is called the hermit heretic or the reluctant hero. And then I was like, oh shit, okay, got it. And I started experimenting with my strategy and authority and my life shifted. Uh, And don't worry if you don't know what any of that means, we really get into it in this episode. And we also talk about the shift of this kind of planetary background frequency that's happening in 2027. And it has to do with, drum roll please, the emotional body coming online as an awareness center. And if you know me at all, or if you know anything about my work, you'll know that when I learned about that, I was buzzing because it fits into so much of what's been revealed to me and the teachings and my own journey. You know, it's like, yeah, somatics, the physical, emotional body woven together by the nervous system, vitally important, um, has felt to me like it's really important that it's been coming online for years and that we hardly know how to interface with it. Um, So the fact that this is reflected in human design got me very excited. Anyway, Adrian and I jump straight into it and it is a lot of jargon. I will give you a heads up. If you're not familiar with human design, it'll be a lot of words that don't make a lot of sense, but hang in there. There's also a lot of um, really broad context. I think that it fits into everything else. So see what you think. Also, we say over and over again throughout the episode that human design is meant to be an experiment, that we're not supposed to take our you know, strategy and authority and profile and be like, okay, this is who I'm supposed to be. Instead, it's like, oh, here's a tool to see if I lean into these things, if my life is better or not, you know, so kind of try and see. And it also evolves over time. I love all of that. Yeah, it's an exploration and it is alive. And you know how I feel about that as well. And Adrian, by the way, does human design, astrology, and something called cards of truth readings. I've had these done by her. She's incredible. So there's a link to her site also in the show notes. Book a session with her. She's amazing. Okay, I think that that's it. Let's get into it. Please enjoy this very deep dive into human design with Adrian Meddy. So I'm Adrian Meddy and I do human design. I started as an astrologer. I do something very specific in astrology called step astrology, where the degrees are very significant. So it's kind of a combination of astrology and numerology it's because of the numbers are so important. Um, I then became proficient in cards of truth, which basically combines tarot with astrology uses a simple 52 card deck so that also incorporates 
astrology. And then I moved into human design, which is much more complicated (laughs) because it incorporates astrology, of course, Western, tropical, uh, not Vedic and sidereal. And it involves the I Ching. So if everybody knows the I Ching or anybody who knows it, the gates and human design are related to the I Ching. There's 64 of them. So they're related to the hexagrams there. We also incorporate here the Kabbalah. It's the tree of life. And that makes up what are called the circuitry or the channels when we're connecting gates. So the way that the energy flows, as well as the Hindu chakra system which is what the centers are made of and the gates are in the centers and the channels are between centers. So it all ties together. And this was channeled by a man who renamed himself Ra Urahu in 1987. So the voice came to him and delivered all of this information. So that's what human design is. It's very layered. (laughs) Yeah. I, um, That's such a good description of it. And as I'm listening to you and I'm picturing all of these things, what I will say is if like somebody has never done human design, you can go to a, you can go online and type in like human design free chart, put in your birth information, just like you do for your horoscope and get this. You can see the body graph. You can see the centers, the gates, all of these things so that you have an idea, like as we're talking, what it looks like and how I got involved with it was then I just started Googling stuff, you know, like what's a, what's a two, five emotional projector, like, you know, and kind of learned a little bit that way, but yeah, I'm fascinated by it because it was channeled and I'll link, um, to this crazy video of Ra talking about when the voice came to him. Have you seen that? I don't think I've watched it actually. I should, I should listen to it, especially if you're going to link it. I'm like, I'll go and check it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you, cause it's just such a, like, it's such a great, Um, experiencer account, right? This idea of an experiencer being anything from contact with NHI uh, or with some disincarnate voice who comes and, you know, shuts down reality for eight days and eight nights and downloads this incredibly complex nuanced system that you spend the rest of your life trying to translate out into the world. Or if um, you've seen a UFO or if you have precognitive dreams, or if, you know, there's all kinds of these definitions of what an experiencer is, but so his story is such truly a great experience or story. Uh, I don't even know how this happened, but I found the Gene Keys book that I've had on my shelf forever, which is related to um, human design as well. And I started uh, Gene Key 55 in particular, which is like a prophecy. We're going to get, I really want to get into that. I want to get into like 2027. I want to get into, you know, kind of the background flavor of reality that's been on the planet for 400 years. And now we're moving into something else. Um, so I want to get into all of that, but, uh, first, (laughs) so let's, let's talk about, um, so I'm a, I'm a two, five emotional projector. So use my, that framework maybe to kind of explain the basics of human design to people. Okay. So what we want to start with as a projector, so as the type, so there's reflectors, they're the rarest, they have no centers defined, so they have no channels. So they have gates and there's up to, you can have up to 26 different gates in your design. A reflector is less than 1% of the population. And they're actually lunar beings. So they operate by the moon cycle, basically. So it's important for them to wait 28 days to make a major decision. So it's really interesting because the moon moves through all of the 64 gates in a month. So then we have, and they're a non-energy being, which a projector is as well, and a manifester is. So um, then you have the majority of us are generators or manifesting generators because we have a defined sacral. So it's the sacral center. And with that lit up, that's life force energy. So that's a motor that's never turned off. That motor is always on. So that's why, you know, it's considered to be like a lot of, a lot of energy, an energy being. 
<laughs> so a manifesting generator has a motor to the throat and it has a defined sacral versus a manifester has no defined sacral, but has a motor to the throat. So that's how we end up with a, like a hybrid. And lastly, projectors are the newest actually. Um, and they're about 20% of the population. Manifestors are only 10% of the population and they don't have a defined sacral and they do not have a motor to the throat. <laughs> so otherwise they'd be a manifester. So the motors are, I already mentioned the sacral, um, the root is a motor, the solar plexus is a motor and the will ego slash heart center. It has three different names. It's very interesting to me that it has so many names. So projectors don't have that sacral life force energy. And they're here, there are new leaders. They're here to, to pick out their generators, basically to be recognized by them and invited by generators and manifesting generators to be their teacher, their mentor, their guide. So that's the focus for a projector. And that's what makes you a projector. You have no defined sacral. You happen to have two motors because you're emotional. All right. Solar plexus goes with emotion. And most people are emotionally defined. That is the majority of authority. We call it your authority. So, and it's never in the now. So if you have a defined solar plexus, you are an emotional being and you have what's called an emotional wave. And maybe you only have one, or maybe you have more because there is potential for, for more than one wave. <laughs> Robin's <laughs> fortunate. She only has one that she has to contend with. Thank God. <laughs> so it's a flow rather than like the sacral is in the now. It's an in the now knowing. Um, but you can have emotional generators and emotional manifesting generators. So they're not in the now. Their sacral's in the now, but their authority is not because <laughs> mm -hmm. they're emotional authority. And then there are splenic projectors. So the spleen is also in the now, but it's much quieter than the sacral. The sacral's loud. Like the sacral's persistent. It mm -hmm. says, it'll say, you know, it's the gut feeling. So for Robin, probably when people said, well, listen to your gut. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like as a projector, did you know when people were saying, listen to your gut? What did you have a gut feeling ever? Probably right. not. Yeah, no, right? They're like not a gut instinct to do something much more confusing. I mean, this is one of the things that helped me so much when I found human design. And I want to say clearly, and I know you've said this too, like this is human design is an experiment, right? This is not exactly. dogmatic. You're not supposed to be like, okay, this is what my chart says. So this is who I'm supposed to be or who I am. It's an experiment. And when I found it, you know, the invitation is to experiment with your what's called a strategy or with, um, you know, being an emotional projector, I'm supposed to wait and then wait again and then wait again. Like I'm supposed to wait for an invitation. I'm supposed to wait for the emotional wave to pass. And then even when the emotional wave passes, as I'm making a decision, I'm never, it's never like a million percent. Yes. It's like, exactly. That's the thing like about 80% emotional. or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> emotional beings usually get to 70 to 80%. You don't get the certainty. You don't mm -hmm. get that yes, no certainty that the sacral provides because yeah. it's in the now and because you're never in the now, but it is an experiment, right? So mm -hmm. you see what works for you and you can, you know, it's like, it's recommended if you're emotional that you at least, if somebody gives you once an answer right away, your answer is no, mm -hmm. because you need some time. It's like always the best thing to say is, you know, I, I, can't give you an answer now. I need to sleep on it mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Like, and had I just... known that like growing up or in my twenties or something, right? Like the, like the difference it would have made in my life to not have to make a decision in the moment. And especially, um, when there is an emotional wave, which to me is similar to being triggered, you know, like I'm activated somehow, my nervous system is activated in some way. And making a decision when the nervous system is activated is not a great idea for me. And so I wish that I would have had this information a lot sooner because it really, really does change things. And actually I'm just, I'm really just starting to experiment now with that to really recognize when I'm an emotional wave. Um, when I feel like 
some sort of external pressure to, to do something or provide something my, because I'm a five, a line five, um, as well. So I'm a two, five and people, I have like a double or triple projection. It's double field. projection. Yeah. yeah and right. I mean, and you're a projector. So, mm-hmm. and you're emotional, right? Yeah. So it's really slowed down. Everything's really slowed down. Yeah. But yeah, people are going to project onto you. Right. Mm-hmm. So with, with that five, you know, and you don't even know where it comes from because it's your design side. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you're our savior. Right. You're the only one who can, who can save me. Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Right. And then I feel that pressure you know, to, to do something. Cause I, of course, like I want to help, I want to be of service and I feel pressure to act. And then when I act from that place, like it never quite works out. So I'm just, or it's fine or whatever, but it's messier or it, I have to backtrack and be like, just kidding guys. I said, I was going to do a thing. I'm not going to do a thing. Um, <laughs> so I'm just leaning into that, into experimenting with that aspect, really with like letting the emotional wave settle. And then I feel like I do have some access to, you know, clarity, Yeah, but it's tricky. Cause I can, tr- you know, cause there's a, there's a nervous system urgency to make a decision that feel that can feel unsafe to wait and, you know, getting right. more and more comfortable Especially waiting. When, yeah. When you're in somebody else's aura. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's the problem too, because you have a wide open. So Robin has no hanging gates in her sacral. It's wide open. So you, you, when you're interacting with somebody like me, who has a divine sacral, you're absorbing, amplifying and reflecting it back to me. Mm. And it's hard to distinguish when this is an open place with all of our conditioning that, oh, this isn't mine. This Mm -hmm. isn't my life force energy. This isn't my creative energy. This isn't my sexual energy. Mm -hmm. You know, this is that person. It's somebody else's in my auras. And I think that's really beneficial to realize where you have openness or you're undefined, Mm -hmm. that that's what's happening. Like I'm undefined. I don't have a defined solar plexus. So for the longest time, I thought I was the overly emotional person. You know, I thought it was all my stuff Mm -hmm. because I'm absorbing, amplifying and reflecting it back with more than 50% of the population being emotionally defined. I'm like, (laughs) <laughs> so like for you that's the thing right like you have to get in your own aura and yeah. you have to get out of other people's because the projector aura too it's focused and penetrating mm-hmm. versus like a generator aura or a manifesting generator aura with a defined sacral is is open and enveloping mm-hmm. so it operates very differently like we're here to respond And we have to wait for that. Like we have to wait to respond. We need something to respond to external to ourselves. Um, But we don't have to wait to be recognized and invited, Mm -hmm. which is what a projector needs, you know? And so projectors are very better one-on-one because I can speak and you can even speak to this, how much you feel when that projector does not have their energy their aura focused and penetrating you. Right. You viscerally feel it. It's yeah. like, wait a second, what <laughs> happened there? Or it's the opposite. Like, you know, not learning until the last few years that I was a projector and had this very penetrating energy without an invitation, people are like, get the fuck away from me. Like stop yeah. poking your projector vibe into me. It's not invited. And projectors can see people very clearly, right? Like we can see, it's very easy, which makes, you know, which is part of what makes me good at my job. When I have a clear invitation from someone and I'm working with somebody, I can see very clearly what's going on. And, and, and that gives a lot of like skill and clarity and all of those things, but without an invitation, it's uh, intrusive. And that's something that I really had to learn. Like nobody wants my damn opinion unless it's very clearly invited, like shut the fuck up. So that was interesting to learn. <laughs> yeah. And, and I heard uh, Ra was talking about, I listened to one of his talks on projectors and he was talking about to this idea, since we don't have our own um, energy system, like we, we can't generate our own energy. We run on project on a generator energy or manifesting generator energy that when we're like walking through the grocery store or whatever, our aura is like looking for somebody to plug into constantly. And 
like, I'm so curious about what people will respond to this episode, like projectors, you know, because I, when I heard that, I was like, Jesus Christ, that's what I do. Anytime I'm in public, I'm just like, and I'm, and it's, it's unconscious, you know, but I'm just like looking oh, yeah. for like, who, who well, can I plug into? Yeah. Or so, because you're a split definition as well, mm. which means that all of your defined centers are not connected. Mm. So you have what we call bridge gates, which bridge those splits because the, all of the energy in our body graph wants to get to the throat mm. because the throat is the center of manifestation and expression. So it's trying to get to the throat. Mm. You have an undefined throat and your throat is what separates your two areas of definition. Mm -hmm. So the throat is like your bridge to then have the energy move really quickly through your system. Like I'm single definition. So I don't, it's like, I don't need anybody else. Plus mm -hmm. I'm a sacral, like I'm a sacral being. So mm -hmm. it's like my energy moves really fast through my system, mm -hmm. you know? And I, and I actually am not looking for anybody to then bridge my split. And now you're designed this way. You're designed to be this way. You have this split. You're not missing anything. You're a whole being. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're missing anything, but energetically, like you said, like most of us, we operate 98% unconsciously, you know, we're only like 2% conscious about yeah. these things. Right. So yeah, your energy, like you get out there and you're not aware of it. And it's e even more, it's like, okay, I'm looking for those people who have those bridges that will then get to the throat, you know, and allow me to actually express it too. Right. Which you do, right. You have that, which is why, you know, I should tell like how we met, which was at the contact in the desert conference <laughs> and Jay was holding, Jay Christopher King was holding uh, in-person experiencer group meetings. So live experiencer support group sessions. And uh, I was sitting in there waiting and you were sitting next to me and you just looked very familiar to me. First of all, you're, I was like, you look so familiar to me. And then we started talking a little bit and I think me talking to you put you at ease, right? Cause you weren't sure that it was your jam to be in there. I did yeah. totally. I was like, wait a second. There's a circle of chairs. Do I belong here? Right. I'm not sure I'm in the right place. Yeah. 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 And so this, you know, definitely this kind of recognition. And then I heard you, I, I overheard a conversation you were having about human design. And honestly, I just went like, that's it. Like, that's why I need to know this person. And then we connected and found out that we share a lot of, um, like our birthdays, two days apart. Yeah. It was a very, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of connection and synchronicity there. So, so all of this, and then just a little bit more about my stuff. I'm a two five and the two line is a hermit. Right. And you're saying that like right. projectors need to be kind of in their own space. And that's doubly true um, because I'm a hermit, you know, or, or as a, um, there are other things about the line too, but that's kind of what it's called is like the hermit. Um, yeah. The, the, the line two and the line five, they have um, a harmonic. Mm. So the bottom trigram, which is the lines one, two, and three are personal mm. um, and internal. The lines four, five, and six are external and interpersonal. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um the five and the two have the same harmonic, just one's internal and personal and one's external and transpersonal. Interesting. Basically. Yeah. So they're both projected as mm -hmm. well. So the two projects out the two it's called traditionally called the hermit, mm -hmm. um, but it's the gifted child. It's the natural. It's the person who has their, a lot of talent that they can't see themselves because mm -hmm. this is internal and personal, right? So there's one place where you have to be recognized and other people will tell you like, oh my God, you're so good at this. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you so much for providing this. And you're just designed to, you know, dive deep into whatever rabbit hole you're interested in and, and have mastery of that you know, and that's very projector as well. So I'm like, oh, how nice to be a projector. And then a double profile wise 
double projector on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's when I set this up pre-incarnation or whatever. It's just like, yeah, let's just get as deep as I can into this. Yeah. That makes sense. And so this, and then talking about this idea, um, when I've shared this stuff with projectors, it, it seems to have a huge impact because the world isn't set up for non-energy types. Like the world is set up for generators and manifesting generators. So yeah. You guys are the newest type. You've only been around since 1781 when Uranus was discovered. Mm -hmm. Basically, it actually has to do with astrology when the type emerged in the first place. And we went from being seven centered beings to nine centered beings. Mm -hmm. So we had, we had chakras that split. So instead of just having the heart chakra, the heart chakra is now split between two. It's called the G center, which stands for the gravity center. So this is where we're held together, where our personality and our design are held together. It's called our magnetic monopole here in the G center. And the, and then we also have the split of um, the spleen, which is the center of health and wellness. It's also where our fears are. Mm -hmm. it's it's our original awareness like you have an undefined spleen so you have a tendency to absorb amplify and reflect back people's fears Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) jesus christ dude yeah yeah so when i first started getting into human design and if so if people are like pulling up their charts and stuff all that i focused on at first was the the um type which is a projector and the strategy for the projector, which is to wait for an invitation. And then the, the, um, authority profile. Yeah. The authority and the profile. And you looked at your profile. Yeah. Yeah. So the two, five. Yeah. Yeah. The most important thing is strategy and authority. That's what we always want to go back to. And that is like your type, you Mm -hmm. know, will be in there. That'll give you your strategy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, and then we can go to the profile and get a little bit more, specific with the profile because profile can be a little confusing um no, those are understand. the numbers those are the like you're yeah. you're a one three i'm a two five yeah yeah yes and mm-hmm. then within the hexagram because it's the heck it's a hexagram right so it's six levels basically mm-hmm. um if you know the I Ching, then you'll know there's six lines I could geek out on this stuff forever. You're, um, but you're line it's one because complicated. You, it's, it's complicated, <laughs> but your, your line one makes you perfect for this. Cause you can dive yeah. deep. You can learn all the things you can look super deep. You can become this, the expert, you know, and it's great. It's great. Um, okay. So, so I want to talk about 2027. Yeah. And talk about the 55th gene key a little bit the energies of what's coming, the shift that's coming in 2027 and these different crosses that are coming in uh, during that time. We are currently in an age where the Ajna, which is our mind basically, is the awareness center that we're primarily in. Now the solar plexus, which is a motor, but it's also a potential awareness center is what we're moving into. So we've been very mind focused, Mm -hmm. very strategic. You can see that. For how um, long? Like how long have we been in that? In this global consciousness cycle, that that's what Ra calls it. um, Since 1615, it's called the cross of planning. Mm -hmm. So literally, right. We're talking planning. Sounds very strategic, right? So the cross of planning is actually made up of some gates that you have. Mm. (laughs) It's the 3740 are as part of the cross of planning. It's tribal energy. And then the other two gates that are part of the cross of planning are the nine, which is in um, the sacral. And the, um, and it's the gate of like, of focus. And then we also have gate 16 and it's the gate of enthusiasm, but both the nine and the 16 are part of the logical circuitry. Mm. So, and this is about pattern recognition and being able to see the patterns and constantly improve and it's sharing. It's considered to be collective circuitry here. So we have tribal and that's the externalization. We also are in the cross of the Maya, what's called the cross of the Maya, the Maya being illusion, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of illusion. So it's 
you don't learn the lesson until the lesson is over. So you can't see the pattern until it's completely over. You've seen the broad theme of, you know, there is authority and power. Um, and this also goes along basically with, with a Pluto cycle. Pluto is the planet of transformation. Um, but we've been in a very like strategic, patriarchal, you know, giving our authority away basically to leaders, to old school leaders, which are more the manifestors, um, that type of leadership. So in, in this very masculine driving energy of using our minds, mm -hmm. right? And all being like the awareness being very mental and not being in the more feminine, intuitive, emotional state. And we're, you know, internally, we have all this confusion because we're dealing with illusion because that's how we're expressing with, with across the Maya and externally it's planning, right? So if it's not strategic, if it doesn't make logical sense, because we're dealing with two logic gates, as well as if, if it is, does it serve the tribe? Does it serve the community? It's been kind of rejected, right? So we're moving from a very tribal energy into an individual energy, 2027. So it's a shift and it's a shift into what's called the cross of the sleeping phoenix. So it's a very different energy to go to from a tribal energy to an individual energy, mm -hmm. which is it's individual knowing is the 55. So only, you know, as an individual, what that, what is right for you. Yeah. What is the spirit that you're, you know, what is your freedom here? So where we are now could account for all of our technological advances, basically what the world looks like now. We're yeah. in transition right. because this is coming, the shift is coming in 2027. Mm -hmm. It's we're halfway through 2024. Right. It's happening. It's yeah. It's like right around the corner, but I mean like the past 400 years has been developing the world as we live in now, exactly. which is, the which are these systems, revolution yeah, and, yeah. institutions, um, the governments, the way that they're set up. And like my take on it is that it's not bad or wrong, right? Like it hasn't, it's the, no, it's it served its purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It's born the fruits that it's born. And now it's time for something new to happen, but we don't have to leave behind the, uh, you know, what we've gained in this time. No, we don't all of a sudden all disappear. Those of us who were born before 2027. Right, right. The idea is that, I mean, we're continuing to increase consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. So over these 400 plus years since 1615, right? So we're at like 409 years about now. Um, we have, you know, made progress. Mm -hmm. We have increased our consciousness. And this has been the way it's externally showed up, you know, yeah. in logic, in using and in, in being mentally aware rather than just being survival driven, mm -hmm. which is what like the spleen is about more about survival. It's health and wellness, it's fears. It's very much about keeping you alive, your body, mm -hmm. you know? And so we've been able to then move into this mental awareness and use our minds and use logic, mm -hmm. you know, and look at the patterns and and change things and continue to, to improve and have mastery with that logic and do it for the benefit of all, for the benefit right. of the tribe, mm -hmm. because this is also tribal, right? So it's not like, no, we're just, we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're taking what we've learned. We've increased our frequency and we're moving into a new, we're just shifting mm -hmm. and into a new frequency. Yeah. with a different focus. Mm -hmm, so right. where we're just not going to be so tribally like bound that it needs to be for the benefit of all, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, like sacrificing basically, because it's been, it's, it's a lot of making sacrifices to, so that the tribe can advance. And we've, we've given up a lot of our authority. That's the thing. Like we're in this transition where we're, we're re-owning our individual authority. Yeah. We can listen to our own bodies. We can listen to our own intuition, you know, know what is right for us rather than ceding our power 
to government, to religion, to the public education system, Mm -hmm. to all of these structures that have been built. And I find that particularly when you look at the astrology as well, you know, we're moving, Pluto is going to make its final like visit to Capricorn for over 200 years when it retrogrades back into Capricorn in September and Mm -hmm. there for two months. And then it'll be in Aquarius, which is about the people, but it's about your individual freedom, owning your authenticity and being, it can be rebellious. So, and Pluto was in Aquarius when projectors came into being and set when Uranus was discovered in 1781. And that's when the projectors started. So we're looking at, a new type of being. We don't know what what the centers are going to look like. We don't know what new centers are going to come in. <clears throat> it's predicted that we're going to have new centers, you know, and that um, these new beings that come in m- might appear to be completely like unable to function on their own mm. because they're going to be telepathic and emotional beings and, and they have to have other other beings actually to function mm, interesting they're, yeah so it's you know it's interesting from they're going to be very receptive but we're moving to this we're going to finally realize the solar plexus as being an awareness center so mm-hmm. we're going to be emotionally aware you know so we're we are switching from this very traditionally what we call masculine strategic planning energy right to a much more receptive, feminine, go with the flow. How does it feel energy? And what does, what does your body tell you? Right. That is, so that's really interesting to me because that is such a, a core piece of what came through to me over the past few years is that the body is coming online and that it's an, it's a shift that is you know, that feels like it's from the planet. It doesn't really, it feels like this force that's arriving coming up through us from the planet. And, and like, we, we have really no idea what, like how to do it or. And that's where our design comes from. That's where our body comes Mm -hmm. from Mm -hmm. our vehicle. It actually does come up from the earth. Mm Personality, our mind comes down from the cosmos and it's held together in our G center. So we actually do, it is coming from the earth. I love that because that's exactly what's happening. Our body is from the earth. Like we're so connected and we've been denying it, right? Mm -hmm. We've been so in in the mind and the mind is not the authority. There are very few mental projectors, very small. They're like 2% of the population or something. Most of us have our authority is in our body. Mm -hmm. It's our sacral or it's our solar plexus or it's our spleen or even our will center or our G center. These are our authorities, depending on what type you are. And what your definition is. So this is in the body. This is the body telling us. And constantly, you know, your your emotional wave will tell you something. Mm -hmm. My sacral will tell me something. And the mind wants to jump in really fast and go, well, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. That's not logical. You can't do that. But if you follow your authority, even though it makes absolutely no sense, like me going to contact in the desert. Yeah. Like my sacral (laughs) was on board. And it was like, why am I here? You know, my mind's going, what the heck? Why are you here? Like, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. It's so um, just lines up with all the, with all the downloads and everything, which is, it's about the physical body and the emotional body. And the way that it was shown to me is that we have the physical body, the emotional body, and the nervous system weaves it together, which is why somatics is coming online and we're having to learn how to help the nervous system to regulate the the emotional body because i don't think that the emotional body coming on as an awareness center is meant to be us all running around triggered and uh being like three-year-olds like that's not what this is about at all so we have to figure out how to work with the physical body how to work with the emotional body and my experience with it has been like learning. It's not even like learning. It's, it's more than learning a new language. It's like learning a new way of being and, and trusting it in the face of what I call the overculture, not being aligned with it at all. At first I was like, Oh, everybody needs to slow down as much as I'm slowing down. 
you know, my, my thing has been like the fastest way to go is slow and everybody needs to slow down and decondition. And then over time I've been like, actually that's, that's very particular to me. Like I really need to slow down and decondition other people might as well, but, but there are other people that, you know, like, um, two out of my four family members are generators. They don't want to fucking sit around. They want to use up all their energy all day. And that's fine. You know, they, that's, that's who they are and what they want. So the other thing that I love about this is that we're coming into a time where we really need to trust our own experience and our own way of being, and that it is individual, like take diet, for example, right? Like you can go online and find any, find all the ways to be all the things to do, all the things to eat. This is how you exercise. This is how you eat. This is, you be a carnivore. You can be a vegan. And there's all this science to back it up, right? Because it works differently for different people. Exactly. So even just with that, like coming into your own authority, um, I think that this, I think we talked about this at contact in the desert. It was this little thing that helped me so much when it's like, oh, I have an alternating digestion in human design. And what that means is I don't, I'm not supposed to eat like consistently. I'm supposed to eat when I'm hungry. Maybe it's once a day, maybe it's twice a day. And right. When you have a right arrow for your primary health system, if you have a right arrow, you're receptive. It's feminine. It's, it's passive. And it means you do really well with intermittent fasting. So it's mm -hmm. something to check out and intuitive eating. Yeah. Basically uh we don't need as many calories. I also have a right arrow here. Mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, is that food, like I was talking about because of gate 37 or gene key 37 is very tribal mm -hmm. eating mm -hmm. is very tribal and it is very difficult to eat what's right for you. And I mean, I think the eat right for your type was the first thing that kind of came out with what's mm -hmm. your blood type, mm -hmm. you know, and eat in accordance with your blood type. This helps to dial it in even more. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, as alternating, like only, only alternating and consecutive, or if you're open or closed taste, I'm closed taste. We're the only ones that really need to pay attention to the actual ingredients. Everybody else is based on light or temperature mm -hmm. or sound or, mm -hmm. you know, like there's all these, um, uh, touch, mm -hmm. like, feeling there's all these different like about the environment how you feel inside you know so it does it makes a huge difference if you can eat intuitively mm -hmm. if you can eat one or two meals a day I've only been eating one meal a day sitting here with a broken ankle yeah um, <laughs> as a manifesting generator right <laughs> driving you going crazy yeah <laughs> It made such a difference for me. It really did make such a difference for me. It was like, oh, because I had this pressure. I'm supposed to eat right when I wake up and then I'm supposed to eat three times a day. And I'm supposed, and I'm just was never that hungry. And that's another experiment that I'm doing, right? Because once again, like these are experiments, just try it out. I don't exactly. like, just see. Exactly. And so I've been experimenting with like waiting until I'm really hungry to eat. And a couple of days I have not eaten until like I might have a light meal at four o'clock and that's it. Cause I'm just not hungry. And all of the conditioning that says, you know, the way that I'm supposed to be doing this and it feels so much better in my body. So all of that to say that, like, we're moving into a time when we really need to learn to trust our own experience, which is another reason that I love the word experiencer is because it is about our personal experience. It's about like, what's true right? And we can look at the world too and look at like AI and like deep fakes and everything that's all this information that's coming to us. Like, how do we know what's true? How do we know what's real? What experience have I had that I could like, that's in my body that I know. And then what comes along with this as well, which I think is huge and is like a huge topic to even go into, but because we're coming into this place of being individuals, we really got to cut each other some slack, right? Like we're not going to oh get gosh, everybody totally. to be exactly, we're not, it's like, everybody's not going to get on the same team. We're actually going to individuate more. And can we be individuals is, without yeah, it's wanting all about to kill each other? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Like, can't you own your own individuality so then you can love everybody else's? 
yeah, not trying to talk everybody into being the same. And it's tricky, right? Because we can see, you know, especially like in the world today, we just saw the presidential debates, terrifying and horrific. We're just all going like, oh my God, we're in so much trouble. And like, there's a lot of us that want the other side to be a certain way and that think we're going to talk everybody into being on the same team. It's not going to be that. I think if there is going to be any sort of tribalism in this, it will be groups of individuals who have shared values coming together around those shared values, but it's not going to be what it is now. Does that sound yeah. fair? I mean, yeah. yeah, totally. Because we still will have, okay, so internally, even though externally we're moving to the cross of the sleeping Phoenix, you know, the 59 is actually um, a tribal defense gate. So it's part of the tribal mm -hmm. defense circuit. So we are dealing with a tribal gate still with the 59. Um, we also internally, how it's going to express is penetration, mm -hmm. cross of penetration, which is what Robin and I both are. Mm -hmm. um, so it's gates 54, 53, 57, and 51. And the 54 is tribal. It's a tribal ego gate. So it's called the gate of ambition. So that's going to be expressing internally. So, but we still do have a little bit of tribal energy here. You know, it's not like it's completely disappearing. It's just shifting its emphasis mm -hmm. rather than having so much emphasis on the tribe. We're going to a lot less. It's individual empowerment. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be how it's externalized versus the 3740, which is tribal and the channel community. So, you know, what we're going to have basically defined overall for the collective unconscious, you know, as we're changing, as we're growing our global consciousness, it's just, it's, it's a shift, right? Yeah. So we're just shifting from this tribal, tribal energy to um, individual empowerment, mm -hmm. which is for you. Gate 34, it's the gate of power, mm -hmm. but it's for, it's individual power. It's not, it's not meant for anybody else. Right. And with that, you know, so there's, I can feel inside of me, this thing, it's like, oh, we're going to shift in this place of individual power. What does that mean? Are we going to take care of each other less? Are we going to be less connected with each other? Yeah. I don't feel like that either. It feels to me like individual empowerment means stepping into whatever our kind of primal blueprint is, or the blueprint that we came onto the planet with and shining like through our particular lens what I would call like our particular genius, like find the genius. And then for me, like use it, I'm still using it to serve the world. You know, I'm still using yes. it to like, to take care of people. And, um, but it is through claiming who I am and not needing as much external validation and not needing other people to conform to what I think that they should conform to. It's like, everybody gets to exactly. be who they are. Yeah. Everybody goes inward. And it's a focus on internal validation rather than external validation. We've mm -hmm. been seeking too much external validation and it doesn't make us happy. It, we don't, it doesn't actually change anything for us with this, mm -hmm. this seeking external validation. And it is about like nurturing and perfecting and flowering the consciousness, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a raising consciousness. It's not, it, it's, we're not going to leave everybody behind. It's just that we need to take our power back. Because mm -hmm. we've been giving it away to authorities, to an mm -hmm. outer, external, like you're saying, external validation, an external authority. We mm -hmm. haven't been relying on our own internal authority. It brings up to this, I think I heard this phrase from Jessa Reed. Do you know her? Yeah, she's great. Um, I heard it from her at some point, but she called, she uses the term uh, external enemy, right? So we're projecting our own shadows onto an external enemy. So we're going, oh, it's the government's fault. It's these institutions fault, it's corporations fault. We're projecting all of this onto an external enemy when in fact, it's all, these are all agreements that like that we fully participate in. We're just often unconscious of them. So moving into this is claiming our, our own power and authority. And, and then the 55th key is coming out of victimization. It's like, Oh, the world is doing this to me. Oh, it's the patriarchy's fault. Oh, it's, you know, which is yeah, it's the blame it's, shame game. It's a blame shame game. Exactly. And then, which is a really easy place to be like, oh, it's men's fault 
or it's the Democrats yeah. fault or it's the Republicans fault or whoever it is, it's this external, yeah, blame, shame game. And so if that changes, we have to come into a much deeper level of responsibility. And then no internal enemy as well, you it's, know, because yeah, I think, yeah. I think there's a lot of blame and shame that's focused on the self mm-hmm. as well as the blame and shame that's focused outwards. So, yeah. I mean, it's the shame part, right? Like mm-hmm. inward is more the shame. Mm-hmm. Outward is the blame. So mm-hmm. we we need to stop with the blaming, blaming and complaining. Mm-hmm. So when we're when we're in the complaining, like, oh, that's we need to take part personal responsibility. Mm-hmm. And the fact is, is that it's all just a reflection. It's all mm-hmm. a mirror. Everybody mm-hmm. else, everybody we're in relationship with. If something is triggering you, if you want to use that word, you need to look at you and, and say, OK, why? Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. is this? What is it about this? Because yeah. usually it's something in you that you don't like. Right. So then we get into the shame spiral. So not only do we need to stop externalize, having an external enemy, we have to stop believing that we are our own internal enemy mm-hmm. as well. And yeah. I don't know what you were going to say, but that's just what came up for me. So. No, I love that. I really love that. Yeah, because that's intrinsic is that somebody's to blame. It's it's a part of myself or we're going to beat up on ourselves or something. And yeah, neither one of those are helpful or empowering at this point, not to say, and you know, it's tricky. It's all complicated. Like, yes, take personal responsibility, but it's, but you know, don't take responsibility for something that's not yours. Yeah. Right. Too. right. Yeah. 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 And what I was going to say is this external enemy thing. It's like, it's also not being in reaction to the overculture. It's not like we're going to say, we're going to move from saying, oh, it's this external fault. It's like the government's fault, the patriarchy's fault, the corporation's fault. And then go, well, fuck all of them. I'm going to go do this. It's like, no, it's not that either. It's just like understanding the nuance of, um, and there's a lot of nuance around victimization because sometimes people are victimized. You know what I mean? Like there are victims and that absolutely exists. And also when, you know, all of these things, what it feels to me like is what we've seen over the last like 20 years moving from the nineties where there was like no consent and we didn't know what the hell was going on. And it was a giant shit show and it was all problematic, like moving into like, Oh, what is consent? What is relationality? What is responsibility? What is somatics? Like, how are we, how are we getting in touch with our bodies? How are we taking responsibility for ourselves? And like you said, not responsibility for what's not ours. All of that complexity has been unfolding in the culture through therapy, through spiritual practices, through, the somatics work that's coming online now, it's been unfolding through the culture for the past 20, 25 years for this. Like, that's what it feels like. It's so that we have some maps and guidelines to move into a place of individuality that isn't toxic, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We got it. We figured it out, Adrian. We, we, <laughs> there are so many people that have been doing this work and so many people that are like on this path and figuring it out and we're all figuring it out and it's messy. And so finding another, I don't know, I'm into like rhyming lately. So like no shame, no blame. And then, and then grace and space, like giving people grace and space as we figure out this very messy, complicated totally. time. Yeah. And here we have Saturn in gate 22, which is the gate of grace mm-hmm. and Saturn just stationed retrograde. You know, it is the the highest expression here, you Mm -hmm. know, and Saturn is our planet of discipline and Mm -hmm. commitment and devotion. So we have this opportunity by the transits even to really review the grace. Um, I guess I'll say one more thing that you and I have talked about a little bit. So we're both the right angle cross of penetration. And that's what we're moving into on the internal side in 2027. And the right angle cross of penetration is about what shocks, uh, (laughs) (laughs) shocks, new beginnings, but it's also intuition because the gate 57 or gene key 57 is the, the gate of intuition. The highest expression is clarity spleen gate. Yeah. 51. So I think that's why there's been a lot of concern as we're moving internally into 51, which is the gate of shock. The thing is, is the city is awakening, you know, this is, and the gift is initiative here, Mm -hmm. but I find this so strange because it's, it's a projected energy. 
you know, so to, to have initiative, you actually have to be invited, but this is individual centering. So it's very mystical. And it's basically like, it's about, it's the shaman warrior priestess gate. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's taking the leap into the unknown away from the tribe, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be, um, you know, leaving everything behind that we ever knew so that we can, uh, so we can get closer to spirit because it, it goes across to unconditional love, to Mm -hmm. the love of, to the love of spirit, to universal love. So we've been doing all the leap that leaps that were, yeah, we've been doing that. You know, (laughs) that's like in our blueprint, like we know how to do that. Right. We moved a bunch of times. We burned down our lives and started over a bunch of times. We've like, this is who we are. We know how to operate in this system. And then the idea of the collective going through that is like, Oh, holy shit. Because it's not right. It's a lot. 53 is the gate of beginning, but the gift is expansion. Mm-hmm. You know, the problem is, is the shadow's immaturity. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just going to be, I mean, all of this to say, like, I, I'm, I'm a great optimist about what's where we're going to exactly. end up, but I think exactly. it's going to be messy for a minute. We're in transition. It's been messy. It's going to continue to be messy, especially once it changes, you know, but everybody feels it because there's some of us, I think that have been more at the forefront mm-hmm. and especially like if you are across as a sleeping Phoenix or you are across a penetration, you already have this energy, you know, this is you, this Mm -hmm. is your purpose. One of the ways that we can be of service here is to, is that we're, it's going to be a little less shocking to us. It's going to be like, we kind of know the deal, which is there's a shock. You go into the unknown, you cross some threshold, you receive some wisdom, you come (laughs) back. And so like knowing that the collective is going through that, we can, help give framework and context to what's coming definitely well we could be here as experiencers right Mm -hmm. like you know you're it i mean my line three is all about experience Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's trial and error it's the you know like oh i just gotta i gotta i gotta experience it Mm -hmm. so we're we come in we've had the experience we we've been able to navigate this our whole lives Mm -hmm. this energy So, and you as a projector, you know, you're, you're out there, you can really guide people, Mm -hmm. you know, and be that mentor through this process. Um, I just, I'm a man, Jen, so it's a little different, but yeah, yeah. (laughs) you're just, you're, you're my, um, you're like my personal human design and astrology, like a uh, guru. I'm like, thank God she's here. So I don't have to, cause when I, before I met you, I was like, God, I'm going to have to learn human design. And it's just going to take forever. And I don't really, it's like, I, I want to, but I don't, it's like, who has the time? And then I met you and it's like, oh, cool. I don't have to. Now I have the, now I have check it off your list. <laughs> yeah. Check it off my list. It's fine. Just call Adrian. Yeah. And speaking of calling Adrian, like, uh, I want to say that I had a reading with you for human design and astrology. Incredible. Learned so much, like so excited, helped me put so much into context um, also appreciate how you continue, you know, continue to say, yes, this is an experiment. This is not prescriptive. This is just what we're, what it's pointing to try it out and see if it works like really amazing. Loved it so much. And so highly recommended. So tell people where they can find you, Adrian, if they want to book with you. So I'm at adrianastrology.com. We're going to continue to work together. Um, I would love, you know, if, when there are big transits coming up, that will affect the collective that we could, you know, I'll have you back on so we can talk about some of those. And, you know, human design has been just really transformational for me. And it's, I understand it's a system. It has limitations where I don't want to turn it into like a dogma, but at the same time, it's such a great framework for so many things that I face and I go through and that seem to be coming online on the planet. So I want to keep offering this to people if it, resonates. There are a ton of other systems, right? Like there's the Enneagram, there's like Myers-Briggs, there's all these different ways where we can learn about ourselves and who we are and how we operate in the world, what our, what our frequency is. I like, I like how human design continues to evolve too. So we didn't really talk about the fact that the gene keys actually came out of human design. So we consider Mm -hmm. human design to be the more masculine strategic side of it, of being a system, right? Like, Mm -hmm a way to mentally understand things. But when you go to the gene keys, which Richard Rudd knew raw, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And he developed, he basically channeled the Gene Keys. It's, it's very poetic. It's very feminine. It's Mm -hmm. like the other, the, the balance to human design. So they go hand in hand. And so when I talk about the cities or the gifts or the shadows that comes from the Gene Keys, Mm -hmm. rather than from, you know, human design calls them gates, the Gene Keys call them Gene Keys. So, you know, there's a, there's a little bit different expression and um, they continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that much about, like I did Myers-Briggs years ago Mm -hmm. um, and my Myers-Briggs changed. Like, yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 And so, and we do change, right? Like we do. And that's why, you know, the transits make sense. And that's why, you know, things are changing in these systems as well. Yeah. The gene keys wise too. Yeah. With astrology too. Right. Like the, which makes sense. Like if something doesn't change, it's not really going to work because that's not how reality works. Like we're going to shift and change. Um, and the gene keys as well, my experience with them, I mean, truly it's, it's, it's like a living text. You know, there's an alchemy that happened in uh, relation to this, which was really extraordinary and lots of books can do that. You know, a lot of people have experience with books like that or with teachings or um, systems where they come in at the right time. There's a kind of alchemy that happens and a transformation that happens. And so could be gene keys, could be something totally different for somebody else, but that was a huge part of this experience in the last few months. So I wanted to share it with, yeah, with the community. And thank you so, so, so much for coming on and giving us all of your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much to Morgan Jenks for our musical soundscapes. Thank you to Adrienne for sharing all of her wisdom. If you would like to reach out and book a one-on-one session with me or learn more about my work, please visit honeyheart.org.